We're going to talk about some of them tonight with the help of the Lord, but it always makes a difference when Jesus passes by. We need Him to pass by tonight, don't we? Boy, yesterday's services were so blessed. I felt the presence of the Lord so richly. I thought in the congregational singing last night was just going to get carried away. And uh, I enjoyed that so much, just the blessing of the Lord. Blessing of the Lord maketh rich and adds no sorrow. Thank God. Well, let's look tonight in the Word of God, Mark chapter number 2, if you would. Praise God. Mark chapter 2, verse number 1. We'll read a few verses there. We're going to actually read from four different portions of Scripture tonight. Go back through and say what the Lord's laid on our heart. I want to be a help. Mark chapter 2, verse number 1, speaking of Jesus, said, And he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noised abroad that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together insomuch as there was no room to receive them, not no, not so much as about the door, And he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, I want you to focus on that little phrase right there, that they could not come nigh unto him for the press. Amen. How many know sometimes there's things that gets between us and what we need from the Lord? Amen. Thank God. I'm going to skip from that. We're just going to stop reading right there and go on to the next portion of Scripture. And let's read in Mark chapter 5, verse 25. I know I didn't finish the story, but I'll finish it later. Amen. Mark chapter 5 and verse 25. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better but rather grew worse when she had heard of Jesus came in the press behind. Let's stop there and go to Luke chapter 19 and verse 1. We'll have a Bible drill if I keep going here, won't we? Luke 19 verse 1. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus who he was and could not for the press. Hmm. One more place, Luke 16, 16, one verse. Luke 16, 16. The law and the prophets were until John. Since that time the kingdom of God is preached. And every man presseth into it. Lord, helping me tonight, I want to preach on the thought somebody needs to press in. Somebody needs to press in. Would you pray and ask the Lord to help me? I really need Him to help me tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you, Lord. I ask God that you touch me by the power of your Spirit. Help me to say the words of life that will help somebody tonight. God, I know without you I can't do anything. Lord, through you anything is possible, dear God. We just pray, Lord, that your Spirit would be poured out. Lord, that we can encourage somebody to seek your face and to seek your face in faith and believe you for the miracle, for the healing, for the deliverance, for the victory, for the salvation, for the infilling of the Holy Ghost or whatever it is is that they need because we know it's all in your presence we pray that your will be done in jesus name and let the church say amen. amen god bless you you can be seated in the presence of the lord somebody needs to press in how many uh feel like uh that sometimes it's a battle pressing your way into the presence of god you ever feel like you know you trying to press in and there's just a opposition hindrance you ever feel like that you're pressing against the press of hindrance and opposition when you go to pray or sometimes when you go to lift up your hands begin to praise 
and worship God? How many times have you got on your knees at home on the bedside and went to pray and you just felt that opposition? Amen. Or come to the house of God and even come to the altar of God and still felt that opposition. Amen. You just couldn't feel the touch of heaven. Or how many times in a service when the Spirit of God was moving and other people were getting touched and helped and it just seemed like you couldn't get in. Amen. But you, you, uh, you were here. You were here and you were in God's presence, but that touch wasn't there. First, let me tell you that this problem that we sometimes have is no new problem. It's an old problem. I remember the saints years ago, long time ago, even when I was a child, that was a while back, that uh, I remember them sometimes getting up and testifying, saying, it's a pressing way. Anybody ever heard that expression before? It's a pressing way. I mean, what do they mean by that? What do they mean when they say it's a pressing way? I believe they mean that it's not always easy to get a blessing from God. It's not always easy to get a prayer through. It's not always easy to feel the power come down. Amen. When you begin to praise and worship Him. But what they're saying is it's a pressing way. You got to keep on pressing. You got to keep on pushing. Jesus said in this verse that we read in Luke 16, 16, and every man presseth into it. To get in the kingdom of God, you've got to press. I mean, even to get saved in the beginning, just to enter in and be part of the kingdom, you've got to press your way in. You don't stumble. You may stumble on the way of God, but you don't stumble into the way of God. You've got to press your way into it. There's repentance. There's work. There's labor. There's things that you've got to do. Things you've got to lay aside. Things you've got to give up. Amen. To enter into the kingdom of God. I was thinking of something else <clears throat> Jesus said in Matthew 11 and 12. From the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent, violence take it by force. The word force, when I've read this verse at times, of course, I may not be touching on exactly what it's all talking about here tonight, but the word force stands out to me and Amen. That's a word that doesn't seem to fit in Christian vocabulary. A force. And what I mean by saying that, it seems too militant. It seems too abrasive, too harsh. And as Christians, we're taught to be submissive and meek and mild, submitting to God. But we're also taught to resist the devil. Scripture said, Submit yourselves therefore unto God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. He's not going to flee from you unless you first submit to God. Then you'll be empowered to resist the devil. Praise be to God. But we're taught to be meek and mild. And the word force as it's used here actually means to seize, to lay hold of, to take, to pull. Amen. To embrace. Amen. The truth is, as Paul said it, Amen. We as children of God need to come to the throne of grace, not meekly, but boldly. I know when I say that, I'm talking about God, and I'm talking about God Almighty. But you and I as Christians are not just anybody in the world. We're children of God. Amen. We're children of the King. Paul said, let us come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. How many has got needs tonight? How many needs help tonight with those needs? When we all need help, some time ago I was praying <clears throat> for someone to be healed that had come up for prayer at the end of the service. And, and it came to me that while I was praying for them to tell them to quit asking as a beggar. Many times we come before God, amen, and, and I'm talking about children of God, and we approach Him begging Him, begging Him. But we really aren't to be beggars, amen. And God told me, He said, don't. Tell her not to ask me as a beggar. Tell her to ask me as a child, as a child of mine. I mean, I was thinking about what Jesus said. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask Him? Brothers and sisters, when we come to the altar of God, we need to come with confidence. We need to come as children of God. 
Amen. We are not beggars. We are not foreigners. We are not strangers. Amen. We are not aliens of God, but we're a dear children. Amen. Therefore, there's no need to approach Him as an outsider. We're an insider with God. Amen. Just as your child, amen, and your family comes to you and asks you for whatever they want or desire or have need of, amen, and if you are able, you're going to reach out to meet that need or to give that want, if possible, if you feel like it's good for them, you're going to reach out and do that because it's your child and you love your children. And that's the way our Heavenly Father he is about us. He cares about us. But you know what? I really think when it comes to getting what we need from God, we need to be passionate about our prayers. We need to be passionate about our praise. We need to be passionate about our worship. Passionate about what we need from God, taking it to the Lord. Amen. Instead of being passive, we need to be passionate. We must take action to remove, to climb over, to get through, get beyond whatever stands in our way. So we, when we get past it, whatever stands in our way, we can get what we so desperately need. Now I'm going to give you a little country illustration here, if I might. I remember years ago, my dad uh, and I, when I was living at home, raised uh, hogs or pigs. And um, when, it, when an old sow would have her pigs, sometimes she'd have eight to ten. And when it got, they got hungry and they went to mom, I noticed something that took place with those pigs. And they began to root their way in, one trying to push the other out. Now, I'm not advocating that you push your neighbor out, but I'm advocating tonight that you push your way in. Amen, that you do your best to push your way in. And I'm not telling you to be a pig about it. Amen. But I am telling you to go after it just like it's all that you, that you want, you desire, and all that you need is in God. Amen. And I, I said that to say this, don't be laid back when it comes to pressing in and getting what you need from the Lord. Amen. Be like that, that group of four men who had a friend. Amen. That had a need. And when they heard that Jesus was in town, and that what Jesus was in the house. Anybody believes in town? Well, sure he is. Is he in the house tonight? Well, sure he is. Where two or three are gathered together in his name, he's in the midst. He's in the house. Amen. But, oh, thank God, when they heard this, they took hope because they had heard what Jesus had done for others, and they believed that he could do it. Amen. For their friend, he was sick of the palsy. He was a paralytic. He couldn't do anything himself. He couldn't get himself there. So they believed if they could just get their friend into the presence of Jesus, amen, that Jesus could meet his need. Amen. You know the story when they go to the house where Jesus was, the Bible said there was a press. Of course, that press means crowd, a number of people. Amen. They had filled up the house where Jesus was, and it was so full Amen. They was even standing in the doorway and the men could not get their friend in because the house was so full because of the press or the hindrance. They couldn't get him in. Amen. They could have easily gave up and went back home. Of course, if they had of, he'd have went back home like he came. But instead of doing that, they began to look for a way. I tell you, sometimes you got to go to an extreme to get what you need from God. Say, now, I don't believe that, preacher. Well, I know it's so. It happens in a lot with a lot of people. Amen. They gotta go beyond the normal. Amen. They gotta go beyond just asking. They gotta press in and ask again and again. Amen. Reaching out, trying to get through. I was thinking about this. Amen. They decided to go up the side of the house and get on the roof. Amen. Where Jesus was underneath. And they tore the tiling off. You know the old story. As they tore it off, they opened up a hole. Amen. And began to let the man down. And the Bible said, when Jesus saw their faith, He said to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee. Of course, I, what I love about this story is Jesus always likes to take care of first things first. And that man's greatest need was he needed to be saved. He needed salvation. He needed forgiveness of sin. Amen. So Jesus done first things first and forgave him of his sin. You know, a lot of people want the Lord to do things for them, but they don't want to take care of first things first. 
But if they'll let Jesus do it, He will take care of first things first and get them in position that they can be ready to receive, amen, what they need from Him otherwise. But how many know salvation's what anybody needs first? Amen. And so it was. Amen. They went on the roof. They tore back the tile. And somebody tonight needs to put forth an extra effort. I know you can come up here and pray two or three minutes at the close of a service. Grab your books, your Bible. Amen. Your purse, your belongings, and head out the door and go home. Or sometimes you can pray on a little while longer until the power comes down and the blessing comes. Amen. I remember one night in particular at the home church at where uh, one of the brothers come up seeking for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I mean, he prayed for a little while, and he prayed a little while longer, and he prayed a little while longer, and people started getting up. They got tired. They started leaving. One right after another, different folks leaving. About half the congregation had done slipped out, and Brother Todd kept on praying. He prayed, and, and I tell you, he wore me out praying. But we hung with him. We kept on praying with him. Amen. He got to a point there that there wasn't very many people left in the house of God. But he prayed till the power come down. God baptized him with the Holy Ghost. He fell backwards off over the altar, laid out in the floor, speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. Amen. Because he kept pressing in and because others were there with him. Now, I might say this, when people's praying around the altar and you get done praying, amen, as a Christian, one of the best things you can do is start praying for somebody else and help them get through. So, well, I didn't get through, so I'm not concerned about them. Well, you ought to be. Oh, I better get out of the pastor mode right there. That old pastor raised up in me right there. (laughs) Amen. Uh, But this man had some friends that cared about him. Aren't you glad you got friends in the house of God that care about you? Amen. That will help you in your time of need. Speaking of, amen, of stepping out and obeying God, you know, if you're pressing in, maybe there's times that God might speak to your heart and ask you to do something that's, out of your comfort zone. Amen. How many's ever had him do that? Has he ever spoke to you to get up and run around the church? Ever spoke to you to get out in the aisle and raise your hands and praise the Lord? Ever blessed you in such a way that you felt like the liberty of the Lord was there to dance in the Spirit? Amen. Well, I've experienced all of that. But I'll tell you this. I remember a brother was at a camp meeting. And God, it was my... Uh, wife's cousin, first cousin, his name's Rodney. And he had been seeking for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And he had been praying different times. But he went to this camp meeting and while he was there, the Spirit of God spoke to his heart and told him, you get up and go up in the front and walk him back and forth across the altar area. I mean, here there is several hundred people. He had a camp meeting and God speaks to him and tells him, the Spirit speaks and tells him, to go walk across the front of the church. What's that got to do with it? I don't know, but if God says do it, you need to do it. That's part of pressing in. Somebody pressing in to get what they need from God. Hallelujah. He done that. He went up to the front of the church. And he's a kind, he's a real solemn fella. He walked across the front of that church and he walked back. And when he got to the middle again, the power of God hit him, slayed him in the floor and filled him with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because he was willing to step out, amen, on what God told him to do. Praise the Lord. These men right here, amen, went beyond, over and beyond, amen, the call of duty as far as I'm concerned and getting their friend to the Lord. But because they did, that not only did he get his sins forgiven, uh, amen, he got his body healed that day because Jesus spoke to him and told him to take up his bed and walk. He throwed it over his back and walked out of that place, amen, healed by the power of God. Somebody needs to press in tonight and get what they need from the Lord. In that second portion of Scripture, we read about the, amen, the woman that had the issue of blood. Amen. She was sick. How many? Was it 12 years with this? Very long time. And she heard about Jesus and heard what Jesus could do for her. Amen. If she, he could, she could just get to Him. She believed it in her heart. She said, if I can just touch a hem of His garment, I know I'll be made whole. I don't know who this is for tonight. I'm just trying to obey God. Preaching my heart tonight. 
Amen. So, uh, amen, she went to where Jesus was. And guess what? Here's the press again. Here's the hindrance again. There's a crowd around him. She, amen, couldn't easily get to him. But the Bible said she went behind. She was looking for a gap. She was looking for a place. She was looking for a spot. Somehow so she could get in. Jesus is totally surrounded. Amen. But she's looking for a way, amen, to touch him. She was looking for a way to press in. And there was a little home. Amen. She found her place. I kind of feel like she got down low. The Bible doesn't say that. I've always pictured it in my mind when she saw that opening. She got down on all fours and began to crawl toward Him. Amen. It could be the Spirit of the Lord may speak to your heart, tell you to crawl the altars. Amen. And seek the Lord. And so I hate to be having to do that. But if it took it to get what you need from God, wouldn't it be worth it? Amen. Say so that's so simple, but sometimes it's the simple things that we overlook. I'm telling you, obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. We need to obey God. Nonetheless, she crawled through that opening. She reached out and touched the hem of his garment. She pressed in. When she pressed in, the power, amen, came out of Christ. The Bible called it the virtue. It went out of his body. That healing virtue went into her body. And instantly she was healed. The Bible said she felt it in herself. Nobody had to tell her. She knew it was done. Amen. How many knows you can get a touch from God that nobody else has to tell you? You're going to know you got it for yourself. Hallelujah! Amen. That's what happened in her life. She was touched by the power of God. Amen. And she was healed because she was willing to press in. Somebody needs to press in tonight. Amen. It's just a simple challenge. Amen. From the Lord. And then we was reading there in the book of Luke chapter number 19 about that little short man that we've all heard about ever since we was a child in Sunday school. Zacchaeus was a wee little man and a wee little man was he. Amen. He was a short man. He was of little stature. But he heard Jesus was passing through Jericho. Did you know that this was the last time Jesus passed through Jericho? He was on his way to the cross, from what I understand. He was on his way to Jerusalem. He didn't come this way anymore. So this man needed help, and he needed it this time. What another opportunity, amen, to see the Lord. It could be the Lord's dealing with somebody, amen, and this is your time, your night, your opportunity, amen, to get what you need from the Lord. So Zacchaeus heard that. So he went to where Jesus was, and again, here's the press. Jesus has a crowd around him, and he can't see Jesus. He's trying to look over everybody, standing on his tiptoes, can't see Jesus. Amen. But oh, he wanted to see Jesus. Now I'm going to offer this to you. Amen. Zacchaeus really didn't know what he needed. Amen. He was going as a spectator that day. He just wanted to see this celebrity, this prophet, this great man that everybody talked about. Amen. But when he got to where he was, he couldn't see him. But Jesus, I believe, had it all worked out ahead of time. Amen. To where this man could get in position to where he realized not only to, that he wanted to see Jesus, but he needed Jesus. Amen. It could be you've come here as a spectator tonight as a result of somebody inviting you to the house of God. But I want to tell you this. Amen. He knows what you need even when you don't. Amen. And He can reach out to touch your heart. Amen. Even when you're not looking for it. Amen. But old Zacchaeus, he's trying to press in, but he does it in a different manner. Amen. He decides he's going to run down the road and climb up in a tree. You know the old story. So that's exactly what he did. Amen. He gets out ahead of the crowd. Sometimes you got to get beyond everybody else. You got to get beyond what people think. You got to get beyond what people say. You got to get beyond what people do or what people have done or what they haven't done. I mean, you got to get beyond all that because you got to think about what you need for yourself. Amen. That's exactly what he done. He climbed up in that tree and he perched himself and positioned himself in such a way that he could see Jesus when he passed by. And as the story goes, Jesus came right underneath the tree where Zacchaeus was and looked up and called him by name. How many knows he knows us by name? 
Amen. He may have never, you may have never seen him, amen, before. That's the way it was with Zacchaeus. He may have never seen Jesus before, but when he saw him then, Jesus knew who he was, called him by name, told him to make haste and come down. Amen. D.L. Moody said somewhere between the limb and the ground, Zacchaeus got salvation. Because when his feet hit the ground, he's making things right with the Lord. He's already talking about, amen, paying people back that he had been dishonest in his business with and so on. The Lord moved in his life. Amen. The Lord wants to move in your life tonight, whatever it is that you need. Amen. For the day was over with, Jesus told him, Amen. Today salvation has come to thy house. Not only did Zacchaeus get saved, his family got saved. Amen. That's the power of Christ. He can bring somebody in, even the spectator. He's reaching out to pull and to draw. Amen. But the simple thought of the message is tonight, Amen, for you to press your way in. Praise God. You know, if you want to feel the blessing and the touch of the Lord, uh, you got to get out of that comfort zone. You got to quit setting around. You got to get to pressing in and pushing ahead, trying to get a hold of God, uh, believing that He's going to move on your behalf. Praise God. You got to push your way through, uh, and it's worth whatever price you got to pay. I mean, if He deals with you to lay aside a weight, to lay aside something else in your life, amen. And then He's going to bless you. Lay it aside, my friend. The blessings of the Lord are ten times better than anything you'll ever have in this world. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Come to the Lord determined. Come seeking Him, expecting, looking for Him to move. Praise be to God. In Acts chapter number 3, I'll try to close soon, but in Acts chapter number 3, we read about Peter and John going to the temple at the hour of prayer. As they approach the temple, there's a lame man, been lame from his mother's womb, born crippled, never walked. Amen. Never knew what it meant to run like these little boys and girls. He had never experienced that. But oh, how he longed for it when he seen other people walk by. But they placed him at the gate of the temple to beg, amen, money to make it through life. And here he was, above 40 years of age now. And he's begging for food. But as he's begging, Peter and John is passing by. Amen. And Peter says, look on us. And the Bible said he looked expecting to receive something. I know he's expecting to receive money. Amen. And Peter knew that too because Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. Give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he reached down and he got the man by the right hand and he lifted him up. And as he was lifting him up, the power of God touched him. His ankle bones received strength and he leaping up stood. Amen. For the first time in his life. And he began walking and leaping and praising God as he went into the temple. Praise be to God. How did that happen? Amen. He had an expectation. If it was small at first, but it became big. Hallelujah. It turned into faith. Maybe you come in here with a little of expectancy tonight, but could I tell you, amen, the power of the Lord's present. Amen. He's ready to help somebody. He can loose you from the things that bind you. He can help you with the things you need help with. Come, Sister Gail. Amen. Come expecting. Come looking. Pressing in. Somebody needs to press in tonight. There's all kinds of experiences that could be told. There's people right here sitting in these pews that knows exactly what I'm talking about. The majority knows. But brother and sister, why not press in when it comes song service and praising? Why not press in when it becomes altar service and seek Him? Let's stand tonight. I've preached in my heart. Somebody needs to press in. Say, preacher, it's Monday night. We've worked all day. But what is it you need from God tonight that's more important to you than a few winks of sleep? A few moments of physical rest. You need the rest of God. Maybe you come in here depressed and discouraged and you need Him to touch you. There's help at the altar for you. Amen. If you'll press in, somebody needs to press in. Maybe you need a healing in your body tonight. 
By His stripes we are healed. Praise God. You need to press in. And maybe you come here tonight empty in your soul. You've tried the world and it hasn't worked. But you come to Jesus and you can find peace. Peace. Wonderful peace. Praise God. Heads bowed. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I preach my heart tonight, Lord. I really believe you're speaking to somebody. It's time for them to press in. God, that they take time to come into the altar tonight and present their petition to you with praise and with faith. Lord Jesus, we know tonight that we need to come with hearts uplifted, hands uplifted. Lord, looking up to you, expecting, believing, trusting, having faith. Lord, let your will be done. If there's one sinner here tonight, save them. Somebody hungry for the Holy Ghost, fill them. Somebody needing deliverance, deliver them. Somebody that needs a chain of a habit broken, break it. Lord, I know you're waiting on them to come to you because you're willing. If they'll seek your face. The Bible said, draw nigh to God and He'll draw nigh to you. Tonight, would you bring your need to the Lord? Amen. This is for anybody. Sinner and saint alike. You want to seek God for what you need. Somebody needs to press in. Amen. I'm talking about more than just a 30 second prayer. Coming and seeking God in faith for what you need tonight. You need help from the Lord. The altar is open for whosoever will. Whatever the need is. Whatever the burden is that you're carrying. You want to cast upon the Lord. Whatever your trouble is, you want to bring to Christ. Amen. He's the answer tonight. Somebody needs to press in. I know it's not easy, but it's worth it. Amen. Praise God. Press on. Press in. Press through. Praise God. Somebody's got a tear on your cheek because God's dealing with your heart. Won't you come tonight? Bring your burden to the Lord. And if you don't feel like you have a need to come and pray yourself, come and get behind somebody else and help them pray before you leave tonight. Amen. It's early yet. Let's take advantage of this opportunity. Bring our needs to the Lord. Come on, church. Come on, church. Praise God. Come on, young folks. Take time to pray. Take time to pray tonight before you leave. Call upon the Lord, sis. Call upon the Lord. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. Oh, the need can be met. The heart can be touched. The body can be healed. Oh, Jesus, in your holy name. Lord Jesus, somebody needs to press in. Somebody needs to press in. Like the woman that had the issue. Like the man that was a paralytic. Like Zacchaeus, somebody needs to press in. He was comfortable and dry in the boat that stormy night. When Peter saw the Lord out on the sea, he said, Lord, you're not that far. Let me come to where you are. So he got out of the boat. He just believed. Just one touch will be enough for all your need. And when you hear him say, come, I wouldn't walk, I'd run right now and get to Jesus. Whatever it takes to get to Jesus. Somebody whose life is full of grief. Just one touch would be enough for all your need. I wouldn't walk, I'd run right now and get to Jesus. Maybe you can't see down the road where you've been, God only knows. And the hope within your heart has almost died. Friend, I have good news. Hope is reaching out to you. He's 
right here. 